and welcome live to the LV Home Experts radio show where we talk about real estate and financing. So today we have a very special guest, licensed real estate agent out here, broker, and he also owns an insurance company. So on today's episode, we're going to be talking about insurance and why you should have insurance on your home and all the different types of insurance and insurance policies that uh, you need to cover on your home, no matter if you're buying a rental property or personal property. And also, I guess we could talk about cars or something like that, too, as well. Mm -hmm. So uh, I want to get right into it because we have so much to talk about. But before we get into this, I want to introduce my co-host uh dan french oh what what's up, going what up, on what up? everybody can you guys hear me out there yeah of course why okay. you can't hear yourself i don't know it's kind of like a little echo but yeah i guess i can hear me you can oh hear you know me, what right? yes, well yes, what i can't I can. do is i gotta turn you up a little bit more there you go sounds a little bit better now there you go you want me to go a little bit more yeah just keep it going I'll keep it going i don't, I don't want to overpower everybody yeah, yeah i don't want to like <laughs> drum out your ears <laughs> But uh, let's get right into our special guest. I believe this is how you pronounce your name, and I've been asking so many times and destroying your name, Maroos. Maroos, yes. Maroos. Yes. Maroos. I, I actually like that name. That's like a sexy name. This guy dresses like a pimp. Also, the other thing, guys, if you guys want to call live in the studio because you guys have any questions regarding insurance and how insurance, ha- you know, how it actually works, go ahead and call in live the studio today at 702-409-4495. Again, call live in the studio at 702-409-4495. So, I want to get right into this. Um, first and foremost, let's talk about when did you get into real estate? That's crazy because I got into real estate and insurance simultaneously at the same, at the same time? time. Yes. So I got to kind of backtrack. Yeah. I was a table game supervisor, like in the old days, I guess they used to call it Pit Boss yeah. at Caesar Entertainment. And we got to the point where I start coughing a lot and I just couldn't handle the environment anymore. Is it because of the smoke? Yeah. Okay. You know? And uh, and I work the night shift, and mm-hmm. it was just the heaviest of smoke. Okay, you were leaving a cloud, you know. <laughs> and uh, literally, my dream at that point was like get into some sort of my own business. Yeah, that I don't need to see any anywhere that is a smoke around me. <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> so um, at that time, I had um, all estate for my own home and auto. Mm-hmm. And then I went, I guess, for some policy change. Oh, I, I got my second home, and I was trying to do the landlord policy there. And I yeah. went to see my uh, agent at the time, and I'm like, how do you like this? And he was like, it's actually been pretty good. I've been doing this for 12 years. And I'm like, mm-hmm. time goes back, you're going to do it again? It's like, yeah. I'm like, okay, I'm in. Uh, where can I start? <laughs> so he kind of directed me, and I started my... <laughs> First insurance agency with all estate brand okay. back in March 1st of 2017. Okay. It was in West Sahara. And then uh, during that time, I was already studying for my uh, real estate license too. But so you, you are a licensed broker, correct? Broker for insurance. Yeah, okay. On the uh, real, real estate, estate side, I salesperson. Am. Well, this is an insider news, but okay, yeah. I'm studying to be a broker for the real estate as well. Ooh. But it's uh, t- very time consuming. It's just yeah. that's why you probably see this. I um, so black. We should we should yeah. you know we have everything in this studio, but except a makeup artist. Maybe we should get a makeup <laughs> artist in here. Yeah, I don't get enough of sleep because I'm constantly you know. working. <laughs> so so when did you get into the insurance part? Like, how long ago was this? <clears throat> March first, I opened my agency. That was with All Estate. Yeah. And then March 1st I, of this year? March 1st of 2017. Okay, 17, okay. Yeah, and then I uh, sold that agency to a good friend of mine with All Estate back in June of 2019. Okay. And then I went the broker route. So now uh, at my broker agency, which is in the corner of Sahara and, I mean, uh, Tropicana and Jones, uh, Modern Choice Insurance, that uh, office offers... Pretty much, uh, currently we have about 12 different companies Mm -hmm. from uh, personal to business and all. So what, what made you uh, broker off on your own when it comes, when it comes to insurance versus just being a part of Allstate? Okay. That's a great question. Yeah. 
um, with all estate, I was limited to one company. Yeah. And at the time, uh, this is something uh, that I guess it's great general knowledge for your yeah. audience. So every year, especially in a city like Las Vegas, when we're, uh, you know, our population, our population grows, uh, over time, uh, you know, there's more risk. Yeah. Uh, there's more people coming in. There's more accidents and there's just more people in the route. And uh, because of that, insurance tend to go up. Yeah. And all estates, one of the biggest company out there, uh, pretty much what happened with them at that t- point of time, uh, they've been raising rates on all their clients to catch up with the losses of last year. Okay. The way it works is uh, every year, at the end of the year, all insurance companies buy insurance divisions m- policy. They need to uh, report their profit and loss from prior year. Yeah. So uh, if they had so much loss, insurance division would let them uh, up to certain percentage increase their uh, renewals okay. on the current client so they can make up for the loss that they had in the past mm-hmm. and hopefully stay in business and so they can actually pay future claims. Okay. So I had a business that was technically uh, almost like a pitcher with the hole. Like I was keep bringing new clients in. Yeah. Okay. And uh, my old client were leaving because I had only one company mm-hmm. and the rate were kind of like keep going up. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'm like, okay, well, there's got to be a better way to do this. Okay. So uh, I came to the conclusion that I need to go and become a broker myself so I can have different companies. So if one company's rate going up, then I can put them in somewhere else. Yeah, so you're basically just brokering out the deal at this point, and you just go to a bunch of other insurance companies. Exactly. Okay. Now, uh, you getting into real estate, why'd you even get into real estate? Uh, why even I get into real estate? Yeah. <laughs> All right. I. So here's the thing. Uh, I do have passion for real estate, but I like insurance. Okay. Got it. Insurance is some... So for me, that came from like a broker... Uh, uh, kind of like a, a corporate world, I needed to have that kind of a residual coming in mm-hmm. so I know that um, uh, there's money flowing in. Uh, but on real estate, this is, the some, this is something that I really love to do, helping mm-hmm. people buy or sell or invest in real estate. I've been involved in it since 2009, and, uh, you know, it get to the point where my friends and, you know, families and stuff, they're asking me, hey, you know what? You can start helping other people now. You, you had enough deals under your belt because I was buying, selling, flipping, uh, being landlord. I've pro- almost been in every corner of real estate. And I feel like, you know what? This is something that I really love to do. I enjoy yeah. doing it. So eventually when I left the casino world and kind of like I start doing my own business, uh, I'm like, okay, this is time to get into real estate as so well. So you, you were actually flipping properties too? Yes, back in the good days when okay. things were a lot easier now, and more Now, I want to I go back with, um, talk about, you know, when you're working at the casino, and, and I want to know the truth. Okay. When people don't pay money, what do you guys do? You guys take them back to the back and rough them up? <laughs> is that real? Is that only on TV? No, this is in <laughs> old old movies and stuff. Okay. And he just wants to know, is the mafia still got it, their hand in, in all that? You know what I mean? <laughs> I mean, you must know something. <laughs> um, we just, look, there are still a lot of like a really, like people that are living with gambling. Yeah. And they're like the pros. Oh, really? And, yes. And they try to do whatever they can to make mm-hmm. money off of gambling, which yeah. is okay. I mean, but, the, but the on it's, the, on the it's other a different hand, lifestyle though. Like, yes. right. I mean, they, they literally, they don't know the time. Like you go into casinos, you don't, there's no clocks. And then you start getting entranced and like, okay, I'm in these games, right? Yep. Poker. And all of a sudden there, it's like eight, eight hours later. Yeah. And they're still going at it. You know, yeah. they might take a break. They'll hold their spot, yes. cigarette or whatever. They're still, you know, going, yeah. you know, Still burning, and they go get some some lunch or breakfast or whatever they're doing, and then they come back, right? Keep coming, yes. So, w- what what game do you like to play? You know, that's the funny part. <laughs> um, 
for me, learning those games, because I started as in dealers. Yeah, yeah. And, and uh, for me, learning those games were one of the biggest challenge of my life because I never gambled before yeah. in my life. Mm -hmm. And it was like learning other language. Yeah. And because now you need to know the game with all the rules and policies and procedure to deal it properly yeah. to the people that are on your table. Mm -hmm. And, um, but if I want to gamble one day, mm -hmm. uh, I enjoy craps. Okay. Because that's, that used to be my main game that I used I to I love deal. craps. Is that yeah. the best odds though? Like, you know, you probably know a little bit. I mean, uh, right? Like if you're going to go gamble in casinos, what has the best odds? I would say blackjack. Yes. Single del Blackjack? Yeah. Blackjack. Yes. The craps isn't up there at the top five? Probably, yeah. Well, 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 here's the thing. Or, yeah. What I know is about craps, because I love craps. I've been, mm -hmm. I, I just started playing like relentlessly. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. um, you can win some money, but I don't go. I don't really go there, try to like make money. Like I just do it because it's, it's mainly for fun. It, it's a fun because exactly you're all hanging out, you're all trying to win, right? Yeah. But what I realize is that with, with craps, you can't just go in there and just start throwing money around. You really got to feel the table if it's hot. Or if it's not hot, right? Yes. If you want to play the pass or don't pass, you know. Well, you got good luck charms. Like, there's guys that go in there and it's yeah, like yeah. you start winning. I've seen, I've talked to people all the time. There's like somebody standing next to them. They're very superstitious. Oh, right? yeah. Right? Yeah. Very because superstitious. The gambling, the people that are there not to just have fun, they're there to gamble. Yeah. Oh, my God. There's all kinds of superstitious <laughs> going yeah, yeah. on. <laughs> they got don't the rosaries. Yeah, don't yeah. do that. Don't. It's just all kinds of stuff. <laughs> but no, no. Crap, on a serious note, I love craps. It's fun. Um, it's like you're all working together as a team. Mm -hmm. But, you know, when you win, you you win. And if you lose, you lose. But uh, this last past week, uh, I lost 600 bucks. <laughs> wow. That's a new pair of shoes for you. Uh, yeah. Yep. Uh, basically, that's what a client <laughs> said. But um, the funny thing about it is I win more than I lose. But there's sometimes it, if the table is slow, you're just like, oh, shit. Just hurry up. But it, it's not fun. I realize when you only have like three people, it's not fun. You have to have a crowded, you know, table. Yes. And people have to interact. That's that's what I enjoy. I also think too, like when you go to gamble, mm -hmm. it's your like you said, people take it as a business or like it's their job. They go in and they're they're focused. Yeah. There's it's all business. There were there were this one week that I had this lady that I used to come, let's say at nine p.m. That's when my shift used to start. Yeah, I would leave at five a.m. Mm -hmm. And then when I come back again at 9 p.m., she was sitting in the same yes, exact seat. I've seen like, it. Oh, my God, lady. Like, <laughs> and it's like they got nowhere else to be. Like, yeah. where's your family? You got no nothing. Yeah. You got no dogs, she cats, was nothing at home. Like, what? Drinking coffee. It's just, yeah, it's just, let's go. It's, like, oh it's crazy. God. And these yeah. are a lot of them are locals. You know, like, especially mm -hmm. when you go to these casinos, like the local big casinos, mm -hmm. all the uh, station casinos, they go out, man, and you literally you see them there four, five, six hours. Oh, yeah. Easy. Okay. Different. Now, I want to get into uh, insurance. Okay. A lot of people that I talk to when they're buying homes, especially uh, first-time home buyers, right? When when they get insurance on a home, they don't really understand what insurance is, right? And why do you actually need insurance on a home? It, can you explain why you should have insurance on a home yes, for the basic actually, people out there? It's great that we have uh, a lender in here yes. as well. We can kind of go exactly. at it together. So just like when you purchase a car with loan, mm -hmm. the bank that's giving you that loan, they want to make sure that mm, auto that you're getting a loan on is yeah. fully covered. Yeah. And in case if you decided to uh, total the car, <laughs> the, the insurance will pay for it. Yeah. Um, same thing, I guess, with the house. You know, yeah. when the bank... Uh, are lending on the property they want to make sure that what if the house catch fires what if uh you know um if it get flooded or stuff like that that are big ticket items and, and i'm sure ordinary people don't have enough money yeah. saved up to fix it back up so they require the property to be insured so to the at least loan to value correct so how how does the lender know how much coverage the home actually needs? Like how does that process work? <clears throat> that goes into core logic because mm -hmm. insurance and uh, appraisers and lenders they pretty much use the same mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> technology, which is pulling comp on the property, and they can kind of see like this is how much the property is worth, 
Mm-hmm. And also, based on estimator, they can estimate, let's say, uh, this home burnt down to the ground. And uh, we want to see like how much it's going to cost to actually rebuild this house to previous condition, yeah. how much it costs. I mean, so they use that. Yeah. So, so Dan, why don't you give an example for, well, the, for well, the audience? What they go off of is the loan. Yeah. Okay. So The loan amount the or loan the amount, total? The loan amount. Why would they go over the loan amount versus the value of the property? Because that's the what loan amount. That's what they're giving the loan on. That's the co- that's the, what the value of the loan is. So basically, yeah. it's like this. But you what happens enough- if it costs us to build more money? That's all I'm saying. So look, you have to have that mi- minimum coverage of that. Right? Okay. And then you have a cost replacement estimator. Now, what he's saying is, is that if something happens to the home, what is the cost to replace it? They're not going to come out. Banks aren't going to just give you a check so you can do what you want with it. Ooh. Okay. What they're going to do is they're going to come back and they're going to say, okay, this is what the cost is, but it also has to have dwelling in there too. Because yes. look, you can go in there and say, well, I got a cheap quote and I got the cost replacement estimator. But if you don't come back and it's not part of the dwelling, for instance, if you had a manufacturer home, let's say you have a roof that goes goes wrong. Mm-hmm. Well, they might not cover the roof. You yeah. might have to do it as, as you being the owner of the house. So so you have to have the full coverage and it's got to be the right coverage and people get misconstrued with that. Okay, so let, let's break this down for the audience because now we're getting a little bit technical. Yes. So typically when, when you do financing or if you're even buying a home cash, you should always get insurance before you close. But let's just say the home is worth 500000 It appraises at 500000 okay? Now... Somebody has to go out there, an insurance person has to go out there and say, how much does it cost to build the home? Yes. If the cost to build this home is 300000 then as long as you have coverage of 300000 Correct. Okay? Yes. You don't have to have whatever the remaining balance is. You now, have you to- could get additional, though. Yes. Like, yes. If, you, if you want it, like, you have jewelry, right? Yeah. Or you have something in the house that mm-hmm. you can always say, hey, do you guys cover this? Do you cover this? And then there's an additional amount. Mm-hmm. People don't understand when they're getting home insurance, it's completely different than private mortgage yes. insurance. Yes, and, and then we're going to get into that in just a bit because I don't want to jump ahead. So now let's just say the cost of the bill is 300000 You yes. need a minimum requirement because that's what the lender or the bank requires because at the end of the day, that house doesn't belong to you. It really belongs to the bank, right? Yes. They want to make sure out. that their asset mm-hmm. is covered. But now the question I have for you is, based upon lumber costs and everything that's going up, mm-hmm. now... It may cost more to build. So what what happens when you close on the home? Now the cost to build is four fifty. Then what? How does that work? Great question. And uh, easy answer to that is every year at the renewal, mm-hmm. insurance companies they have the right to change the rate, make the adjustments. And then so far in the last four or five years, mm-hmm. they've been consistently raising the rate to catch up with that yes. lumber cost and cost of building, rebuilding the property. Okay. And you make a good point. And the reason why I'm bringing this up is because a lot of people are misconstrued because when they get a fixed rate on a home, they think they're just making this $1,400 payment for the rest of their life. No, that's incorrect. When you get a fixed rate for 30 years, let's say at 3.2%, right? And you're getting financing out here. Everything is all bottled in. P-I-T-I, which is principal interest, that will always stay the same for the 30 years. But then you have property taxes and you also have insurance. So what happens is this goes into an escrow account. Then what happens is as money gets into an escrow account, it gets distributed between taxes and insurance. But sometimes at the end of the year, you may say, oh, how come this service company, how come this bank is now charging me $45 more when I was supposed to have a fixed rate? Right? Mm -hmm. It's because what happens is the bank makes the adjustments based upon the insurance company mm-hmm. to cover those costs. Definitely. And it's the same thing well, with property taxes as well. Here's the other thing. So you can waive your insurance and taxes too. You don't yeah. have to have an escrow account. But here's the thing. Why would you even do that? That makes no sense oh. to have three different payments. Do you well, see what I'm saying? It does. I think some people like to control and you can shop. Yeah. Right. And so look, you can change that. doesn't mean it's going to change the outcome, but mm-hmm. you know, a lot of people, they might just say, Hey, you know what? I don't like this company. I'm switching. You know, yeah. and as long as that's getting paid, it's getting paid. Now, to avoid that, just a quick tip for the audience here. Here's the thing. Once you go into escrow and you're doing the financing, guys, what you need to do is you need to shop around, right? Yes. And obviously, we're going to call you now, right? <laughs> yeah. We're going to call your insurance company, right, to get All a right. quote. Then you're going to connect that salesperson with Dan so that way they can that can actually be a part of your escrow account. So that's how you're going to nip it in the butt because what happens 
a lot of times, and a lot of agents are not aware of this and they don't advise their client, they'll just send them to a lender and the lender automatically has an insurance company that they deal with, but it's always best to shop around. Like with me, I always go with Allstate. And the reason why is because I have a full bundle package. So all my properties are covered through Allstate. And the reason why I do this is because it's a lot easier for me. I can go to one site, I can see all my properties, I can see all my life insurance, but I can see everything. It just makes it easier. And I don't know how true this is, but if it's all together, is, is it cheaper? Almost all your policies get multi-policy discount, but this is an area of opportunity for me. I can re-quote you on all your... Hey man, you trying to sell me some? <laughs> hey, man. Don't, hey, it's don't business. Think, don't know? think insurance agents aren't out to make a dollar, man. Okay. <laughs> well, first Let's of talk. all... Let's talk. Let's okay. talk after okay. the podcast. So, so, so the, question, the question is this. Are you a real estate agent first or an insurance agent first? Um, you can't be both. <sighs> if you're a superhero, you got to pick one. Yeah, you know what? Maybe that's why I never married and I don't have a kid. That that's yeah. answering your question earlier. <laughs> that's the only way I can make it happen so far. You should be you should be marketing yourself dual agent. <laughs> that's what you should. You well, should, here it is, man. I you mean, see his car up in the front. It's wrapped up, man. <laughs> you should. But um, 007. Yeah. Yeah. So, which one is first? Honestly, uh, it's it's a question that I ask myself mm -hmm. every day, but. Uh, thanks God, I built my agency to the point where even if I'm not there, um, staff are taking care of the clients. Yeah. I have a very good uh, customer service rep, and I have amazing uh, sales producer. He actually was my producer back in my all estate days. Oh, okay. Now, once once I open my my brokerage, he joined me, and he's just still there and. No, I'm kicking it. I'm I think curious. we should go open up an insurance company. Yeah, you should. <laughs> I'm you gonna know. wrap my car tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I want to say one thing though. Uh -huh. So you said insurance was something you felt like got into where you were doing well. Real estate's more your passion. Is yes. that right? Yes. Which one was harder to start? Insurance, definitely. Really? Yes, because on uh, okay. Well. Not at this point, but when I started the real estate adventure as a licensed realtor, it was up to me how much I want to do and how much volume I, I think it's make. hard though, isn't it? Like that first year for real real estate, yes, it's just very demanding. So I was thinking that you know when you get into it, yeah, but, because insurance. But <laughs> but I'm gonna tell you exactly the uh, like difference of uh, responsibilities. Okay, when I start, for example, with all estate. I got to have minimum four employees per all estate requirement mm -hmm. to even open my door to public. At real estate, I can be solo agent. I needed to have an office open to public. That's a rent, right? All these other technologies that I paid, the, the phone service, the internet service, the uh, client management service, and all these leads that we purchase. Yeah, but the leads get, are they easier to get insurance right away? Maybe because you're maybe buying, because some people buy into a franchise. I know you did your own, but mm -hmm. maybe it's easier. Like a lot of people feel like the hardest part for real estate is leads. I don't know, but this is not a business podcast going on right now. <laughs> this is about insurance, dog. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> so I want to get back into uh, insurance. So when, when somebody gets a loan and they're going through the process of screening to hire you to, you know, for the coverage. Dan, you mentioned additional coverage. Yeah. What additional coverage would there be? Is there a certain policy from the lending side saying that, okay, the construction cost is at 300,000. So we, we need a minimum of that, but there's probably got to be other additional policies that are on top of that. Am I correct that the lender requires? Not really. I mean, as long as you're covering the minimum, they don't really care. You can get above yeah. it, but that's just something that if you, that's personal, like, hey, you know what? You know, what if you got something that's like really expensive paintings in the house or something that you just But that, that would be a different coverage. It wouldn't be a part of the, the, the part of the loan. Do, do you additional. see what I'm saying? Would, would that be a part of it or something separate, a okay. policy? Like, so let me clarify that part. Yeah. So within the insurance policy, there's like different section, mm -hmm. like, the dwelling coverage, yep. which most companies, they can give you <coughs> up to 125% of the actual estimated value. And of that's the what you want, minimum, right? 
the minimum is 100%. You cannot insure it less than 100% of what it oh, actually yeah. worth. 125, that's that's the best, you're saying? Yes. Okay. Well, that's uh, usually the case for people that they either already have some extra, uh, like a custom stuff on the home, or they have planned to put that, and they just want to make sure, let's say they have a custom kitchen, they have a custom bathroom, they want to make sure everything is covered yeah. properly. Okay. That only so that's the dwelling. Dwelling. Okay. And then on top of that, um, next section is technically your personal liability. Meaning, let's say, and that's required by the lender, right? Based upon what we're talking about right now, right? Pretty much, because you can't just separate that. You can't give someone. Well, of course, if it's a landlord policy, we'll get into that in just a second. I just want to stay focused exactly. on that. Okay. So on a homeowner's policy, if we're yeah. talking about just Home, homeowners, homeowners okay. yes. On a homeowner's policy, it comes all in one bundle. Okay. Right? So you can't just say, I just want this part. I don't want none of that. It's like, so, at least you got to get a minimum of okay. that. Okay. Right? So what you're saying is the bundle for the homeowner policy, number mm -hmm. one is the dwelling. Dwelling. Then you, you have an option for 100% or even 125. You probably want that additional coverage. It's nice to have. Preferably, yes. Okay. Then the second thing is personal. That's personal, within that bundle, personal right? Personal liability. Like, I'm going to give you an example. Let's yes. say you have a guest at your house and their kid is sleep and fall and hit the head to the ground and hear... That's his fault. <laughs> well, that's not how the <laughs> okay. guests think, right? Yeah, yeah. And they're going to, you know, it's a lot of cost yes. to take care of the hospital bills and all that. Of course, as much as they love you, they got to mm -hmm. come after your homeowner's insurance and kind of file a claim against you, per se, like sue you for the cost of their son... Uh, sleep and fall, right? Now, what's the minimum coverage for that, Dan? 100000 and you can go as high as 500000 Okay. And then, if you want to uh, even have more, then that's when the umbrella policy comes in, mm -hmm. and then you can get, like, up to... We'll talk about in the umbrella in just a second. So, within this bundle, dwelling, personal, what else do we have within it? Uh, then you have personal belongings or personal mm -hmm. items. Which that's uh, technically what Dan was saying earlier. Like, let's say someone has a lot of jewelry, mm -hmm. uh, art, paint, and basically costly type of uh, items in their home. Yeah. Uh, like myself, I have a home studio for my music. Yeah. Just that room would cost me about 60 grand to put together again. <laughs> so I do need to have a proper coverage for all the equipment that I use. For mm -hmm. my home estate. Now, what about like th with this bundle package? It doesn't make any sense. We're talking about like jury personal. I understand if somebody gets hurt on your property because obviously, <coughs> you know, it, this is a asset to the bank and they don't want that, you know, liability, right? Obviously. So I understand that part. But what about like flood insurance? Because the reason why I bring this up is because I look at some of these policies, especially with my rental pro uh, properties. They don't really cover on the, the flood, but it also depending on the type of flood, right? Like if they flood your house on purpose, it may not cover. But if it was like a natural disaster, that could be something different. So th is that covered within this policy, this bundle package here? Mm, no. You have to get additional, but you got to see. I mean, think about that, right? And, and one thing that I realized from experience, your house will flood, especially in Las Vegas, because here's the thing, especially... At the toilet, at the water supply, if it's tight and too tight, what happens is as it expands and contracts, that could literally broke, break. And that's what happened to me. I literally flooded my house. And that's a whole other subject because as I was going through the, the claim, right, the claim adjuster was fighting me all the way through. But luckily, I was persistent and constantly on them. And they're like, you know what? We got to fix it. But that's a whole other subject. So going back to this. Natural disasters, is that covered under the standard policy that the bank actually requires? What do you mean by natural disaster? Uh, let's just say a flood. Example. Flood. Okay, so see, there's two type of floods. Yeah. Right? There's a water backup. That's mm -hmm. the proper verbiage for it, I okay. guess. That happened within your house. That's ex extra coverage that you can always get on your homeowner's policy. So there's you, a limit for it. So you 5, should 000, be getting 10, it. 10,000, 15,000, whatever, okay. how much they're going to cover. Mm. Okay, that's, those are extra details that you can always add to your yeah. customize basically your policy, right? Yeah. 
And uh, there is this natural disaster, like an actual flood zone. Mm-hmm. Thanks God, in Las Vegas area, we don't have much of a flood zone. Yeah. And uh, almost all the companies that I work with, um, they have, based on the the location of the property, they yeah. can tell if this property is in flood zone or not. Yeah. Um, and if the property is in flood zone, they require to have a flood insurance, which is a whole separate policy just for flood. Yeah, that's what I noticed. And a lot of these brokerage will disclose that if your property is located in a flood zone, even um, with yes. the lenders, that uh, your insurance policy will go even higher. So uh, I know that uh, the county does have like a flood zone map, and I think that's what the insurance companies use, right? Yes. Okay. It's a very narrow area. Okay. What about like uh, fl- uh, fire damage and stuff like that? Is, is that like a standard policy as well? Yes. So that goes under that dwelling coverage. Yeah. So let's say for whatever reason, house catch fire. Mm-hmm. Um, that goes under dwelling coverage. Okay. And we, let's say you were not even home. And by the time the firefighter get there, the home is burned to the ground, right? That's when you should have proper coverage for the uh, house to, if you want it to be built all the way to the... There's, uh, yeah, there's a lot of insurance companies. Well, yeah. not a lot, but there's been insurance policies that were sent back. Mm-hmm. Because what people don't understand is this has to be in place and there's got to be an effective date. Yeah. Right? It's got to start when you actually take ownership of the property. Mm-hmm. The problem with it is a lot of them don't check off that it covers the dwelling as well. Yeah. So what that does is that, like I said, if you don't have that... The, the, every lender is going to want to make sure it's covered with dwelling okay. as well, including the cost. I guess that makes sense. So basically, what you're saying is the lender has a checklist. We need a minimum of this, 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 this within the dwelling, mm-hmm. right? So within that bundle uh, home policy, the dwelling, we talked about this. You got the dwelling, the personal, the personal belongings, and also fire. And what you're saying is the lender says you need at least 100% for the dwelling. Uh, personal, you may need Anywhere from a hundred thousand to five hundred thousand, whatever it is, that's optional. Yeah, I, I'm just saying. Just, yeah. So that part is optional, but then the uh, personal belongings that's optional too as well. Is mm-hmm. that correct? Yes. Then we have fire that may be a certain full coverage, which is that one twenty five or one hundred percent, right? Okay, so that makes sense. But then the water that's an additional coverage because there's two type of floods you talked about: natural floods, which is Obviously, they would check with the county to see if it's in a flood zone. If it's a requirement, then the lender will require it at that point. Then you would have to get additional coverage if somebody actually flooded your home. Correct? Yes. Man, this is getting very confusing, but also this is actually very good information because a lot of people just don't know this. Exactly. And trust me, I literally went through the whole process myself, and I had to pay pay the deductible. But the thing about it is that I realized that when I was going through this process, I was thinking, I'm one of the fortunate ones and very blessed to have the money to pay for it. But there's some people just don't even have the money to even pay for the deductible. And I don't even know how to even get their home fixed. It's just unbelievable to me. Now, I want to talk about um, insurance for investment properties, for all the investors out there. Okay. Right? How, how do I know, right, which policy to get like what is the best policy because every time i call i always have to go through this whole process because i can't remember all this stuff right like yes. right now i'm retaining it and i understand what you're talking about as soon as you leave i'm like i totally forgot and if i need to get new insurance which is i'm literally Just call me i will matter of fact you know what we're about to close on a condo here in the next couple days matter of fact i gotta re- remind york to remind me that I got to get covered before we close. And that's another thing. Quick tip. If you're paying cash, make sure you're fully covered. And another thing is that if you are paying cash for a home, right, you need to make sure before you close on the deal, can you actually get insurance? Because there was one time I was going to buy another condo. Come to find out the condo had already flood, right, at one time. A lot of insurance companies would not insure me because they put like some sort of check mark. I forget exactly what it was. That, hey, this, this home is tainted. We're, we're not going to cover it for like a whole year. What's up with that, man? That's one of the things that I always do during my real estate transaction. Yeah. During my due diligence. Uh-huh. First thing I do, because I'm an insurance yeah, agent yeah, yeah. as well. I forget the name of it, though, that, that list that you guys check. Well, uh, no, you just got to run the check on the property. Yeah, yeah, And like, basically, you just create a code. And, yeah. and just like if you're coding for someone's... 
uh, auto policy and, mm-hmm. and, and basically run their driving record and all that. Yeah. On the home policy or landlord policy, which we're going to talk about it right yeah. now, uh, it runs the property uh, background and see if there was any claim on the property. Yeah. Just like when, when my home flooded, you know what Allstate did to me? They said, we don't want you anymore. Our policy canceled. I was like, ding, 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 ding. Then what, get you. Then, then what, what happened was, you know what's crazy? So I had to go through like a third party, like a broker, uh-huh. just like yourself. I paid a little bit more, so I was like, whatever. So uh, the funny thing about it was that after like a year, Allstate called me back and said, yo, we'll insure you. So oh, I had the whole. Like you said, yeah. you're calling back to re-up because you, you're yeah. trying to cover the percentage, right? Just yeah. like you said, you'll call your same exactly. clients back. Mm hmm. So matter of fact, I went back and everything's all good now. But what I found out was that a lot of homes actually flood out here in Las Vegas. There's tons of floods, not natural floods, but, you know, toilet backups or whatever it is. It's, it's kind of crazy. We don't so, have, you know, we have a dry city. Yeah. Right. Um, we don't have a lot of fires. I don't see a lot of fires out here. Yeah. Thanks God. Thanks God. Yes, we don't. Yeah. We don't, though. Right. You no. don't see a lot of it. And that's yeah. that's, that's, that's mean, a good thing. Yes. Well, I mean, even though it's dry, I think because we just live in a, you know, there's nothing to burn. Yeah, exactly. Just dirt. <laughs> Just rocks. Hey, Definitely. hey, don't be saying that because you'd be driving to Southern Highlands. Next thing you know, your house is on fire. <laughs> Just nothing but rocks. <laughs> Next thing you know, you're like, hey, I got a good insurance guy. <laughs> now, I want to go back to the owner policy real quick because I think this is important because we do have a comment on here that I do want to address. And he makes a very good point. So if you have a home that has a pool and you live in there, Obviously, that's going to be additional coverage, right? Yes. Okay. How much more is something like that with additional coverage? And how how do you know how much to cover? Because, number one, we know from a liability standpoint, which you talked about uh, personal from 100000 to 500000 So that's probably something that you're probably going to want to increase. But, like, does it also cover, like, the damage of the pool, right, if something is wrong with the pool? Or is that something completely different with... Uh, home insurance, like home warranty. Yes. Okay. And this is where people get confused. Exactly. Let's yeah, talk yeah. about that. Actually. Yeah, yeah. So insurance versus home warranty. Home yeah. warranty is a whole another policy that anyone can get. It's optional. Yeah. It's not like homeowners insurance with lenders. If you have a loan on the property is required. Yeah. The other one is optional. Mm-hmm. And that covers pretty much all the major component of the house like yeah. electrical plumbing and uh let's say air condition water yeah. heater appliances, appliances. Mm-hmm. yes uh and also pool yeah that's one of them i uh, like you know the pump and all this other stuff yeah yeah uh going back to your original question or the audience uh, question regarding pool it is your homeowner's insurance is not covering the pool component yep like the pool pump Mm -hmm. right Uh, but it covers the liability of it and a lot of time they actually ask once you select this home has a pool actually pulls up in the report yeah that this home has a pool right Uh uh-huh um once it pulls up and it's going to ask hey if this pool has a fence around it Oh, because of the liability. Yeah, yeah. Because if again going back to that, uh, that little player kid, if it start walking around the pool and somehow slide into the pool, mm-hmm. uh, it can be a major liability for the homeowner. So, but what's crazy though out here is a lot of people don't put that fence around the pool, and I I notice um, a lot of homes that do have a pool will have the side gates that automatically have to shut and lock. Mm-hmm. And also the sliding glass door typically will have some sort of alarm. So what you're saying that if you have those items, your insurance should be a little bit cheaper than definitely for for, sure. for that policy. Then of right, of course, yes. Okay. Also, just like if you have, I'm sorry, I'm yeah, yeah, no, 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 no. Just okay. like if you ha- you can prove that you have a fire alarm, you have. Um, um, what like, about cameras and stuff? Like water shut off. Yeah. Like uh, the sensor that if there's flood or whatever, it shut off the water. Mm-hmm. Oh, all of those items. Like if you have a um, um, what is it called? The um, is the sprinkler system? No, the I forgot the the word. Oh, the carbon monoxide detector. Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, these items, if you can prove that you have that in your home, those are lowering your your liability because you know it's just uh, it's a safer home. 
Dan, you, you, know? you just missed out, man. He just dropped some good content. So basically, you didn't what know you this. Say? Smoke detectors, if you have smoke detectors, smoke alarm system, whatever, or, you know, carbon monoxide, cameras and stuff like that, all this stuff can actually help lower your insurance policy. Oh, yeah. Or not. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. It's uh, preventative things, right? Like yeah. if yes. something happens, right? Yeah, of course. Basically. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cool. I didn't know that. Now, uh, going into um, landlord policies, that that's a whole beast of its own. Yes. Um, you know, when I was going through my policy and I was talking to my agent, mm-hmm. you know, I did bring up the water situation and I was very baffled where they don't cover if, you know, the tenant floods your house. You're, you're basically on the hook. But I, I guess there's like a, a certain point where you should have coverage. I mean, something has to be done, right? Because what happens if you have a tenant and they're mad at you and they just like clog your toilets and, you know, just leave and yeah. and flood it? I mean, like how does, how, how does that work? I mean, there's got to be some sort of coverage for that, right? Yeah, definitely. So uh difference between homeowners and landlord i always explain it this way landlord and renters insurance combined together become homeowners insurance mm. landlord policy is technically built for just covering the dwelling yep because technically the landlord all they care is yep. pretty much covering the structure of the property yeah and whoever lives in there as a tenant, they do need to have a renter's insurance. That would cover their liability because they're the one living in the home, mm-hmm. not the landlord. Yeah. This time around, if that kid is, have a slip and fall, it's not landlord's fault because he wasn't living in that home. Yeah. He wasn't his guest, right? It's the renter's guest. Yeah. So that's why uh, like the liability side of uh, homeowner's insurance, it's not even a case in landlord policy. Yeah. Uh, it, it goes under the tenant policy mm-hmm. or renter's insurance. You, you make a good point. And, um, you know, for all my rental properties, you know, I do have that landlord policy. And in my contract for all my tenants, I require them to have a, a policy, right, for renter's insurance. A lot of people think renter's insurance is expensive. But, like, when I was living in an apartment, I think it was like $22, like, for a whole year or so. It was just, like, something ridiculous. I don't know what it is now. But, um, you know, that's something that I, I would do for, like, all my properties where, hey, you have to prove that you have a renter's insurance Definitely. in order to rent our house, which which is really good. Now, um, what are the policies or for landlord policies? Like, what's under that um, umbrella or that bundle package we were talking about? Like, like w- what's in there? We have the dwelling, Right. Yes. And is it the same thing as personal as well and personal belongings? For the personal items, let's say you rent a house to someone. Yeah. How much of your personal item is there? So on that one, we would just say zero because there ain't nothing there. Pretty much. But what about like appliances and stuff like that? That's why you you have an option for personal items. Yeah, yeah. And it's a very low minimum requirement. If I put these two quotes together on the screen... One side, we have a uh, homeowner's insurance code. Yeah. On the other side, we have landlord's insurance code. Mm-hmm. Uh, on the homeowners, the I guess the minimum personal, uh, personal belongings or personal items yeah. coverage is 10% of the actual property. Okay. Versus on, on the landlord policy, it gives you option of like, 1,000, 2,000, 5,000, 10,000, all of 80, okay. 50, 60, 100,000. Now, so you can say, hey, those items are mine. Mm-hmm. Let's say the appliances. And rough estimate, I have about 5,000 or 10,000 in this home. I need 10,000 on personal items. In okay. Now, what happens if somebody is getting finance? Is there a certain requirement for an investment property as well, Dan? No, I mean it's the same. I mean it's it just has so to they cover just the look property. at it the same way. Yeah, I mean this what you're doing is you're going into more detail of, um, yeah. what are you doing with it? Yeah, right. Like what do you what is the particulars on the property or what coverage do you want? I mean you can get it added coverage, but I mean the bank is always going to just make sure that the house and the dwelling can be replaced, mm-hmm. and that's pretty much it. So for me, from what I remember, because you know how I just told you like when I talk about insurance. I understand what's going on at this point, mm-hmm. but as soon as you leave, I'll forget. <laughs> I did get 
an additional umbrella insurance because I have my personal stuff, mm-hmm. right? I have life insurance policy. I have my personal home. I have all my rentals. I have the car. But I have additional coverage, which is the umbrella, mm-hmm. which is for some apparent reason, I'm so paranoid. I always give me the best thing you got, right? So what is the umbrella policy and how does that umbrella policy work and why would somebody need an umbrella policy and when would you need that umbrella policy okay super great question so just like the name says it's it's an umbrella on top of everything that you own right Mm -hmm. your auto like it's mainly covering your liabilities right Uh, your auto your home your landlord policies that you have um usually when someone wants to get umbrella policy, they, especially on their auto insurance, they do need to have minimum of two hundred fifty thousand on each accident uh, for bodily injury. Let's yeah, say, I noticed that. Yeah, so if you if you hit someone and you're at fault, your um, insurance need to have minimum two hundred fifty thousand dollar coverage for the other persons that you hit um, for their bodily injury. Mm-hmm. And then usually it's combined. So when you read insurance policies coverage, especially that section, which is uh, bodily injury and property damage, yeah, uh, they're kind of like three numbers back to back. Mm-hmm. The estate minimum right now is 25, 50, 20. Means um, 25,000 per accident for each bodily injury, 50,000 for entire accident, yeah. 25,000 for two people in the car. And also twenty thousand dollar minimum uh, personal uh, uh, liability. L- no uh, property damage. I'm oh, sorry. property damage. Property damage. Meaning, if you hit someone's car, yeah, twenty thousand is the maximum insurance would pay. And this is just the limit, right? Yeah, yeah. The minimum insurance anyone can get in the state of Nevada currently, which there's a rumor is going to be double soon. Uh, so, with that being said. Someone wants to get an uh, umbrella policy, they need to raise that 25000 50000 to 250000 oh, wow. 500000 in order to... I'm sure if you look at your uh, auto policy, that's what you have, because yeah, otherwise yeah. they wouldn't give, even give you umbrella policy. Uh, so once, let's say, for God's sake, you had an accident, you killed someone. Now, <laughs> I don't know how funny that is, <laughs> you, know? <laughs> you know, yeah, and and um, they're trying to sue you, right? <laughs> I had to throw it in there, <laughs> okay. I'm just creating a scenario, yeah, right? Yeah, no, okay, yeah. And then now, this bad lawyer is trying to uh, you know, sue you for wh- whatever the loss was, yeah, and it's definitely somewhere in the range of million mm-hmm. once your auto. Uh, policy capped at 250 then your umbrella policy comes and pay the difference oh thank god so that's why you probably need so here, here's the thing you know when i first started my life right I, I didn't have like insurance insurance wasn't as important to me but when you accumulate more and more assets right you get more smarter but then you also have to protect your assets of course. Yeah. and and that's that's just the world we live in right now I want to talk about something that's a little bit different. I want to segue into commercial property. Yes. Reason why I'm bringing this up is because I'm looking to purchase a 20 to a 40 unit building. Okay. Are those insurance policies completely different from the landlord policy? Like how does that work? They have a specific type of companies. Like I'm sure all estate not insuring them. Mm -hmm. Um, there are specific companies out there that are doing multifamilies. Okay. And they just specializing, that's that's their field. Yeah. Like for landlord that own multifamily. Is that something that your company does? Yes. Okay. Definitely. So it's technically a bigger version of a house or a condo, but you're basically covering the structure of that multifamily because... People that live in each unit <laughs> going to get their own renter's insurance, hopefully. Yeah. And hopefully from me. So so let, let me ask you this. With the renter insurance, I mean, you, you can't force somebody to get a renter's insurance, right? I mean, you, you can have a tenant say, hey, you know, provide that renter um, insurance to me, but they can always cancel it too as well. No. No? 
Uh, here's the thing. If you're a landlord, it's your property. There's two, there's two way, I guess, to go with this as far as managing it, either self-manage yeah. or management company. Yeah. I can bet you all management companies, because they don't want no liability on that, they force that mm-hmm. into uh, basically tenants. Yeah. They need to provide it and they need to keep it on. Otherwise, there's going to be a penalty for them. Yeah. But if uh, if it's your yourself uh, basically managing your own property and, you know, you like someone so much, <coughs> like, hey, you know, it's okay, yeah. don't have it. Now, <laughs> let, let me ask you this. If, if I'm a landlord and I require somebody to have renter's insurance, okay, can I also have my company to also be registered on their policy as a notification or... or Somebody that would be notified that if they did cancel that policy? Usually. Uh, Wouldn't that be the best way? Well, right? usually if you are the one that's self-managing that mm, unit or that property, yeah, yeah. yes, then you require in your uh, agreement that I need to be the uh, loss pay because technically it's. So it's called loss pay? Yes. See, that's that's good because. Look, look, guys, that's really good information. I mean, think about this. If you had a, a $5 million property, you're renting this thing out for like $60,000 a month, you want to make sure that you're covered, but by putting your name on there too as well, you're going to get that notification if that policy is canceled. Then now you can have something on that lease agreement saying, hey, if you break this policy, you get canceled or you cancel out, and I get this notification, then we can cancel out our contract together. Which makes perfectly sense because I had a buddy of mine, and, and this is where I learned this from. He had hired a contractor to rehab his home, right? But he didn't put his name as the, a part of that insurer. And what happened was the contractor got the licensing that my uh, friend required in order to build a home because this guy's pretty savvy, man. He's been in the business now for like 40 years. He's building custom homes. Okay. But what happened was this builder, right, this contractor, got the insurance. Then what happened was sent over the paperwork to my my buddy. Everything was all good. What did he do? He canceled the insurance policy right away, right? Next thing you know it, some shit hit the fan. There was a dispute, right, because of the construction. He went to go sue him and an insurance company. Insurance company said, hey, look, guys, Unfortunately, he canceled this policy, so we're no longer tied in. But if he would have done that, he would have got that notification. Yes. Then within his contract, he would have just canceled out. So hopefully you guys are learning something here. I don't know if we're going into too deep of, of a conversation, but at the end of the day, look, you're buying an asset, right? That's a lot of money. You're buying a home, four hundred, five hundred thousand dollars $500,000. That is a lot of money. Wouldn't you guys agree? Mm-hmm. Definitely. Now, you have any questions, Dan? No, I'm listening. Oh, you just sitting there looking pretty. I'm I'm here looking pretty. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Dan has a uh, a dirt bike. I don't know if that dirt bike's insured or not. I think we need to get that insured. Mm-hmm. I mean, how much is something like that? Would you insure? Oh, it depends what kind of dirt bike is it. Oh, he got an expensive one. 1975. No, <laughs> <laughs> I mean Actually, this, that could be an antique. I mean, well, think about it. You you pay twelve thousand dollars on it, right? Mm-hmm. If somebody stole that bike. You know how hurt you would be? Could could he literally get that full amount back? Um, so here's how it works. Uh-oh. When it comes to insurance, it's one of those gray areas that unless I don't run the co- uh, run the code, mm-hmm. I just can't give code mm-hmm. because it's it can be ranging like a like huge difference from the minimum to maximum it will cost. So that's why I need to know like what type of Bike is it, and now let put it in a code, and then I will let you know. But but but, but technically, you get fully covered on something. If I spent twelve thousand dollars on this and say, I will pay the most amount of money, give me the highest amount of coverage, then next thing you know, it's gone. Could you still get that money? So doesn't matter what are you insuring. In general, in insurance world, there's two type of coverage. Yeah, it's very important for everyone to know. Okay, there is a cash value, Mm -hmm. and there's replacement cost. Ooh, okay. Let's break that down a little bit. Explain to the audience an example. Okay, so let's say in a case like this, if he, if um, this dirt bike is covered as an actual cash value, mm-hmm. 
What that means is this bike right now, if it's a used bike, this is how much it actually values. Yeah. So they will give him what it really would sell in the market, <coughs> right? But if it was for replacement, they would need to replace it with another one, and they're not going to give him a used one. They're going to give him a new one if they can find. Yeah. Okay, Just so you would always go for a replacement value then. Yeah, it's a little bit more expensive, of course, yeah. because now, same thing with the home, right? Um, we have two options to insure it, right? Either replacement cost or actual cash value. So actual cash value means, hey, your home was... Uh, 1995 and your window was uh you know from that time and uh you know we can't put you a brand new window we can give you money based on how much you used it and blah 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 and then they basically break it down and they so say, you okay. should never go cash value then well you can't well on a home banks won't do that okay they're not going to give you cash to say hey to, you know, replace it yourself. No, no, they no. no. He, he's it. he's talking about the policy cash value because you said there's two cash value and what was the other one? Replacement cost. Replacement. But the bank's not going to cut you a check, or the <laughs> insurance is not going to cut you a check for cash. Is what I'm saying. No, no, no. We yeah. obviously we we know that. I, I'm just talking about for, um, you know, like a home. It it will always be on the replacement cost. It will never be on a value cost, right? Or do you have that option? You do have that option uh, as an, yeah. So if that's the case, doesn't the bank, shouldn't it automatically require for a replacement cost or a value the, cost the, versus? The, the bank d do require that. Okay, but okay. When it comes to, let's say you pay off your home. Yeah. Right? Now it's up to you even. Now you have an option to have insurance or not because nobody forcing you. There's no bank. You don't owe no money on, the, on your home. And guess what? Oh, I had, shit. I got to write this down. I got to write this down because this is good information. I had a client. It's okay. not like auto that because the registration part require insurance. So therefore, hopefully everyone actually carry insurance to, you know, drive their car. Uh -huh. Doesn't matter. You own it free and clear or not with the bank. All they care is during the time that you owe them, you need to have insurance on that home. Once, so, once you pay off your home. It's up to you. Now become optional. Dude, th this is crazy. I didn't know this. And you make a very good point. Replacement cost or value cost always go with the replacement cost. Correct? Definitely. Oh, my God. I mean, how many people are getting ripped off right now? And we don't even know about this. Everybody. Dude, all, all I know, <laughs> I'm going to tell you this, okay? Some of this stuff is boring because people just don't, they don't really understand it or they don't give a shit, right? But I'm going to tell you, out of all the guests that we have had on the show, this, I'm into this kind of stuff, right? Because it's about money. And I, I, I guarantee that people that are doing investments and stuff like that, you, you got to watch the show, guys. So we're going to redrop the show and we'll, we'll tag you in and all that stuff. But um, what was the uh, name of your insurance company again? Modern Choice Insurance. So if somebody wants to get a hold of you, what, what is the best website? Matter of fact, I'm going to have a link in the description below and also your, all your social media site. So if you guys want insurance, I want you guys to check him out. So what was the name of that uh, again? ModernChoiceInsurance.com. Damn, how'd you come up with that name? You know. <laughs> <laughs> I liked it. A lot of so, good information today. No, he, he shared Thank a you. lot of great information. I really do appreciate you guys, or actually you coming out, because he comes out all the time. Yeah. But if you could share that one nugget, right? Give us an insight. Insurance, anything, insight, right? Coverage or anything. What, what, do, you, what do you think? Anything. I believe everyone needs insurance and never enough. Oh my God, he sounds like a sales guy. Like what? what okay, what, what, even what? if I wasn't an insurance, yeah, okay. uh, you know, agent, uh -huh. I would say still the same thing. Uh, you probably most likely believe in the same thing. Yes, yes, I do. Right. Let's say if you didn't have your home insured, what would happen with that flood? You mm -hmm. would pay for it. Exactly. Like here's that's what I was trying to say earlier. Someone had insurance with me for f about four years, right? Mm -hmm. And that was towards the end of them paying their mortgage. Mm -hmm. Mortgage was paid off. They canceled their insurance. They're like, uh, you know, I've been paying for 30 years. Nothing happened. Mm -hmm. uh, if something happened, I'm going to cover it myself. They went out of country uh, for like two months. Oh, wow. And then when they came back, the house was burnt down to the ground. <sighs> because apparently the water heater, mm -hmm. I mean, when the insurance, I mean, when the adjuster basically mm -hmm. came in to check all this thing to what happened, 
they realized that it, it started from, from the water heater yeah. and they burned the house. And guess what? They just didn't have insurance. So let me ask you this. Oh, they didn't even have insurance. No. Ah, oh, you big dummy. Now, here's the thing. Would he have got replacement costs or value costs? That's another thing. So he probably would have got insurance. But remember this. It's replacement costs or value costs. Now, here, uh, guys, thank you so much for uh, coming on out to this show. We really do appreciate each and every one of you guys from the bottom of my heart. If you guys haven't had a chance to subscribe to this channel, go ahead and click that subscribe button. Also, like I said, I'm going to have a link in the description below with all the information that you need regarding insurance. Contact my man. Other than that, until next time, peace. Peace.